friends! Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Tonight's episode, an intro to GraphQL. And I made a GraphQL song. Here it goes. <clears throat> well, REST APIs are dead. No, they're not. There's something you should use instead. Like what? GraphQL is a library where you can query from the client side. How's that work? You define your schemas and types. I see queries, mutations, and the like. Wowee! Yes, GraphQL is a library. And you should try it out. That's it. <laughs> uh, no sound. James, are you muted? There should be sound. I see an audio bar. <laughs> uh, just a sec. If anyone else doesn't have sound, please let me know. And I'm getting some weird things on my screen. Just a second. <laughs> Amy says the, uh, that song was the best thing in my entire life. Awesome. Uh, just a second. You'll notice there's some like weird things happening with my green screen. Ooh. It's a little bit better. Okay. All right, welcome to the show. Tonight's episode is an intro to GraphQL. Now, I will admit, <laughs> And James had, had mute on, that's okay. Uh, if you missed the intro song, go back to the beginning and watch it. Um, I will admit, I have not worked with GraphQL that much, um, but I have read about it, I've watched a lot of things on it, I've queried GraphQL APIs, and so tonight is gonna be kind of an exploration of what they are and how to use them. Uh, so the agenda is, first we're gonna talk about what is GraphQL. We will then see an example GraphQL API and make some queries to it. And then we will build a simple to do GraphQL API uh, with just like an in-memory array. We're not gonna be talking to a database or anything like that. Uh, and then if we have enough time, I might convert this API to use a backend like Mongo instead. And then if we still have enough time, I might uh, build a GraphQL API on top of an existing REST API. Uh, and uh, Emmy is asking, I said I got a fish. Yes, let me switch to the fish cam real quick. That's him, he doesn't have a name yet. <laughs> Um, I might do like a viewer poll to see if, um, oh, is he gonna eat the food? He knows he's on camera, that's awesome. Um, but I, I might do a poll so viewers can uh, name him. He doesn't have a name yet. All right. <laughs> um, and James is saying he thought it was pronounced GraphQL, GraphQL, GraphQL? Uh, not that I know of. I don't see anything wrong with <laughs> with uh, calling it that. Fish cam. Yeah, I was I was playing around with uh, putting the putting the here. Let me try to do it. I'm gonna put. Okay, that's a big fish. But now he's much smaller. Here. Yeah. How about he he hangs out right down there. Let me know if he gets in the way of anything. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, so what is GraphQL? Uh, first off, it is a query language for APIs and a runtime for filling, fulfilling those queries with your existing data. So uh, in, in the intro song, I kind of talked about um, uh, REST APIs are dead. Like GraphQL is a different way with, of interfacing with uh, data on a backend rather than REST APIs, which people have been using for a very long time. Um, but typically, like, some of the issues with REST APIs are on the client side, you have to make requests to a lot of different URLs to get all of your data. And GraphQL creates a single endpoint where the client can send a query requesting uh, what it wants. And it can request multiple things and it can ask for specific properties of things. And it just makes it uh, much more efficient for the client to get the data that it wants instead of having to make multiple requests. Um, GraphQL provides a complete and understandable description of the data and your API. The other really cool thing about GraphQL is it you define schemas for what your GraphQL API is uh, offering up to the world. And it, there is a visual browser, which is essentially embedded documentation that tells you the types of things you can query for and what are their possible values, and it's all built in. It's really great. Um, 
Yeah, and ask for what you need and get exactly that. So for example, they're making a query here for hero and they're saying, I want just the name property and you just get that back. But if you add other properties to your query, you'll get those things back as well. And this query would be done from the client side and the server side would be returning that data there. Um, get many resources in a single request. So it's possible to put a GraphQL API on top of existing REST APIs and maybe even multiple REST APIs, but you could build out your schema so that to the client, it looks just like one big API and it doesn't have to worry about the implementation details of the backend. Uh, the other thing is you define, I mentioned this types. So you define the kinds of things that your API is going to return and the specific fields and their types. And this automatically generates documentation so that you can query for those things. So enables powerful developer tools. I'm gonna to show you an example with uh, GitHub's GraphQL API and it's amazing. <laughs> so it's like instead of navigating uh, docs about their REST API, you just use the graphical, uh, GraphQL, uh, it is called graphic, GraphQL, GraphQL? Let me spell it out. Graphic, graph, GraphQL, GraphQL, GraphQL? Something like that. But. Um, it's like a console where you can put your queries in to test out your queries, and that comes with it. It's built in. Um, and like I said, it gives clients the power to ask for exactly what they need and nothing more. And while typical REST APIs require loading, loading for multiple URLs, like let's say you make a request for a person, that person has a property called friends, which is an array of IDs. Then you need to make five more requests to get all of the uh, friends that have those IDs, something like that. But with GraphQL, you can get it all at once. And the APIs are organized in terms of types and fields and not endpoints. There's just one endpoint and you send your queries to it. So let's, let's see an example of this. Uh, first, I wanna show um, the GitHub, just the regular REST API. So if you've never interfaced with the GitHub API, they have uh, this documentation that talks about all the different endpoints and they have tons and tons of endpoints. And they tell you, so let's say for instance, um, I wanted to get information about a specific repository. So they have an endpoint for list your repositories or list, list user repositories. So this is REST API documentation. It says, make a GET request to this URL where username is the username you want to get the repos for, and then you'll get a response with like an array of repos. But there are tons and tons of different endpoints. Like every single one of these links is a different endpoint. It has different ways of querying it. And each of these, if you're trying to get data from it, would be a different request on your client side. Uh, and if you've ever perused these, I mean, the, the GitHub docs are decent. Like they tell you exactly what you need, but there are a ton of them. They're just tons and tons and tons of endpoints. This is their REST API. They also have a GraphQL API, this is the new version four a API. Eventually, maybe, I don't know for sure or not, but the, the REST API might be deprecated and they'll go with the GraphQL API instead. But the GraphQL API doesn't have documentation like that. It has this thing, Graphical, which allows you, to, it's, which is basically a console where you can play around with uh, their GraphQL endpoint and request data from it. Um, so just for instance, like this example query here, it says a query for the viewer, that's the person logged in right now and give me their login, which is their username. If I run this query, it sends that to GitHub server. They respond with me because I'm the person viewing it right now. But because they've defined all of their schema types, there's also the docs on the right-hand side. So you can click on query and see all the different types of things that you can query. Um, let's see. Yeah, so licenses. Returns a list of known open source licenses. So let's just try querying for this. So we will say, uh, And the other cool thing is you'll notice as I start typing, this console is giving me suggestions for uh, what schemas and types I have available to me. So let's do licenses. And uh, you also have to say for these licenses, what do I want? So let's see on the license type, what do we have access to? Uh, we have access to ID, key, name. Let's just get the name of all licenses, go. Boom, I get back an array with the name of all the licenses. But uh, let's say I also want the body of the license. So I wanna know uh, what act that license actually entails. Let's take a quick stretch. <clears throat> actually, I'll, uh, I'll make the fish cam a little bit bigger while we're stretching. He's just chilling. I tried to feed him, but um, 
He didn't seem very hungry. He was a little, he was a little uh, shocked whenever I took him from his tiny little container and put him in this big old fish bowl. It's like 10 times the size of what he was living in before, so. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, this is the idea. Like, the, on the server side, they've defined all of these schemas and types, and now in this console, I have complete and total access to them, and I can pick and choose what I want to query for. So let's, let's query for something else. Let's maybe query for, like, uh, repositories. So you can get a single repository by a given owner and a name. Actually, let's just do this one. So let's grab the uh, morning tea repo from uh, Coding Garden. So let's say we want repository. And then the owner is a string. The owner is Coding Garden. And the uh, name we want is morning dash t. OK, so that's going to query for that specific repo. Now we need to tell it what do we want from that repo. And if we look inside of a repository, we can see what we have. We have owner and name. Um, oh, no, so that's the arguments. Inside of a repository, we have uh, collaborators, commit comments, created at, deployments, description. Let's grab the description just to begin with. OK, go. All right, uh, so this is the description of that repo. Links to news I discuss on my morning tea stream. Um, but you can request all these different things. I believe we could probably even request, um, yeah, I think there are um, ways to get like the files inside of the repo. You can get the labels. Let's see. I want the name. Projects, pull requests, push stat, refs, releases, repository targets. All, all, all kinds of things. Um, we can also grab updated at. So like, when was the last uh, commit that happened to this? Boom, uh, this morning, because <laughs> I pushed up some, some things this morning. But this is the kind of like the interface into a GraphQL API. Like once you set up your backend with all of your types and your schemas and how everything relates and what data is available, you then have complete and total access to query that data like this. And it's extremely easy to create your types, and then get access to an interface like this where you can actually query your types. Um, yeah, so this is great. That's an example of it. And really, the, the main difference being um, we are telling the server what we want in very much detail. Instead of the server providing documentation that says, these are all the different things that you can request, and all the different way URLs, and all the different query strings that you can send to it, instead, all of the documentation is here of all the different types and all the different things you can query for, and it's up to you as the client to tell the server what you want. So that is gra what GraphQL is, and that's what makes it so awesome. Now, in terms of how you actually create your own or how you interface with them, there are um, a lot of different server-side libraries. So GraphQL itself is really just a specification for how your GraphQL endpoint should behave, uh, but they have many different uh, implementations that you can use in lots of different languages. So uh, lots of different server libraries for a lot of different languages. Um, specifically, we care about JavaScript. So there's GraphQL JS. You can bring it in, define your schema, start it up. There's Express GraphQL, so you can incorporate GraphQL into an existing Express server. Uh, there's Apollo server, which is a really uh, popular one. It integrates with Express, Connect, Happy, Koa, and a few others. Um, and Tonight, I'm going to be using a package that's even a wrapper on top of that, which makes it extremely easy to get started with a GraphQL API. Um, and yeah, so they have them all these different all these different server libraries for all these different languages you can use to set up a GraphQL endpoint on your server. And then there are also uh, client side libraries. So uh, Relay is the official one. Uh, I guess I didn't mention it, but GraphQL is from Facebook, um, I believe. Yeah, it's, it's really just a specification. It's from Facebook. Uh, but they do have Relay, which is a uh, React client for talking to a GraphQL endpoint. Uh, there's also Apollo client, which is kind of the client for Apollo server, GraphQL request, Loca. Uh, and I, tonight, I'm going to be using Nano GQL. It's a super tiny, super simple library for uh, requesting data and uh, mutating data using uh, client-side code. Cool. So that's JavaScript. There are lots of other client-side languages that you can use GraphQL with. So the 
the ecosystem, the space is huge. You can really find what you need if you're looking for a client-side library or something like that. OK, so um, I have a lot of notes here. A lot of this are actually pulled from the official GraphQL documentation. I'll somewhat skim over it so we can kind of like talk about it at a high level, but then I just want to get into it and like code up a basic hello world server. Um, so the, the main idea with querying GraphQL is about selecting fields and objects. So you saw that in the example that I did with GitHub. So uh, the object we were looking for were repositories or a given repository with these uh, parameters or arguments. And then the fields we wanted were those two things. Um, so it's all about picking out the the fields and the objects that you want from the GraphQL server. And let's take a look at uh, schema types and fields. So you can define a type, and this essentially describes like an object with properties inside of it. You can say, what is the name of the type? What are the different properties that it has on it? And then what are the types of those properties? Uh, in a second, I'll talk about the different types that are available, but they're like the basic types that you would need, string, number, boolean, that kind of thing. Um, and then arguments. So you actually saw me use arguments whenever I made the request for this given repository, uh, because if I just asked for a repository without these things, it wouldn't know which one I wanted. So the arguments I sent it were who is the owner, what is the name, and then it knew how to pick out that specific repository. So arguments allow you to kind of like refine your request or choose specific things that you want from the API. Cool. And then there are query and mutation types. So everything I showed in my example here were just queries. That was just get some data, well, request some data and get that data back. It's also possible to send a mutation. That is uh, a request that will actually change data on the server. So it will create a new document or update a field on a document or something like that. Um, right now, I'm just dealing with uh, queries, but they also have mutations. In the documentation, you can look at mutation and there's probably a mutation to update the description for a given repository if you have the right access, delete a project, uh, remove a reaction, add a reaction, all the different things that change things on GitHub, you would imagine that there's a mutation for that. Cool. Um, yeah, and every GraphQL service has a query type and may or may not have a mutation type. So queries are like the the main way to interface with a GraphQL API, and it it's to, it may or may not have a way to actually mutate data on the server. Um, yeah, and the other thing to mention about arguments is because they're named, their order doesn't matter. So when we saw this example when I was requesting from GitHub, I said owner is coding guard and name is morning tea. I could actually swap this, and it will still work because they're named, right? It's not. It's not like invoking a function where the order of the parameters matters. This will still give us back the same data because we're we're naming the specific uh, arguments that we're passing in. Cool. Oh yes, and then the scalar types. So you have access to int, float, string, boolean, and id. And this is this can be the types of the different fields you specify um, on your um, your schemas. Cool. And then also uh, enumeration types. So um, let's look at what these look like. Essentially, you can define a few different options for some specific field. So like, uh, let's say we had uh, an object for Star Wars and it had an episode property, but the episode property could be only one of these three values. You would define an enum with those three values. Um, and then you can also have lists. So um, I guess in the example query that I was sending, didn't have any lists. Let's see if we can make one. So I'm looking at a repository and could probably request the commits, commit comments. Let's see. A list of commit comments associated with the repository. Let's try it. So I want to get all of the commit comments <laughs> on this repository. So let's say we also want commit comments. Uh, does this take any arguments? Yeah. So. Um, First, last, let's see which one is, none of these are required. So that should be okay. And then a commit comment is commit comment connection. So it has edges and nodes. I'm guessing we probably want the nodes because we want all of the individual, um, maybe I have to do 
this. And the nodes are a commit comment. And the nodes have a body. Let's see. OK, let's see what happens. I might have made a mistake. You must provide a first or last value to properly paginate the comment commit comments connection. So I also I need to provide uh, first 100. So I want the first 100 commit comments. And there are none. <laughs> Um, we can also look at edges. Let's see. What's a commit comment edge? Cursor end node. Yeah. Um, that's probably not the thing that I wanted because maybe the commits don't have comments on them. I actually want commits. However, you'll notice that this is returning an array, and that is the list type. That's how you would request like multiple things from a single uh, query or, or schema definition. Cool. And then also, uh, if you ever see a type defined with an exclamation mark, that means that it is not null, meaning that must have a value uh, and cannot be blank uh, in anything that's returned. Cool. All right. And so that's really for when you're defining your types on the, on the server side. And then we can look at uh, queries. So when you're querying, you saw me doing this. Basically, I was specifying the fields that I wanted from the GraphQL API. And it was giving me back those things. Uh, and if I needed to specify arguments, I would get those back as well. well uh, I would get back the specific things based on those arguments as well. And then you saw me use arguments. Basically, it's a way of narrowing down that search for one specific thing that matches this given argument. So this request is, requests the human with ID 1000. And that is Luke Skywalker <laughs> in their example. Cool. So that's GraphQL server-side stuff at a high level, and also kind of like uh, client-side stuff and how you would query it. Let's build a simple to-do API. Cool, we can leave that open. Yeah, and uh, what I'm going to be building, I pretty much got from this uh, blog post, and I will post a link to that afterwards. So let's get started. Uh, in this directory, I am going to create a folder. So let's bring up iTerm. Second. <clears throat> okay, so let's make a uh, hello graph QL directory. Let's go in there. Uh, we'll do npm init to make this an NPM uh, repository. And code is not updating. Let's reopen that. Oh, I put it in my home directory. <laughs> Never mind. Let's, let's do this. Let's go into uh, coding garden. Go into intro to GraphQL. And then we'll make a directory, uh, hello GraphQL. Let's open this up in code. Cool. So I've got this hello GraphQL. Inside of there, I'm going to do an npm init. And then the package I'm going to be using is a package called GraphQL Yoga. Do I have a link to it? Let's open it up. Uh, this one. So uh, as I mentioned, there are a lot of different libraries you can use to create your server-side GraphQL API. GraphQL Yoga seems to be one of the easiest to get started with. And um, it's actually a wrapper on top of Apollo Server. And um, GraphQL Tools and GraphQL Playground, all of those things wrapped up into one nice little package where you can get up and going. Um, OK, so let's add it. Uh, I'll use npm. So we can just do npm install GraphQL Yoga. Awesome. Inside of there, let's create a new file, uh, index.js. And let's just follow their basic hello world to get something up and going. So first thing is I need to bring in GraphQL server. Let's take a quick stretch. And also check on the fishy. It's kind of just chilling. Back down there. 
I want to work it out so that um, I can have him on the screen, but like the green screen will allow you to see the background. All right, okay. <laughs> So um, this is bringing in the GraphQL ser server from the GraphQL uh, yoga package. So we've got that. Then we need to defi define our very first type. So in this case, we're going to have uh, a very simple uh, query type. Hello, and you pass in a string. So the query is called hello, and the argument is name, and the value is a string. And this says that that string uh, cannot be null. OK, so we have our type definition. The next thing is we need resolvers. So what these are are basically when a given client requests a given query of a given type, how are we going to fulfill that request? And in this case, we're basically just sending back a string. So our query for hello, so these two things match up. So we define our, our basic query type, and this is the resolver for that query type. And it says, when we are resolving hello, uh, we'll get in the first parameter, which we won't worry about. The second parameter, we're going to get access to name. And this is going to be the argument that was passed in in the query. And the thing we're going to return is just a string that says hello and then the name that you passed in. Uh, but if name was not passed in, we'll just say hello world. So that's our resolver. And really, uh, this is what makes GraphQL so powerful, because this resolver can really return anything. It can even return a promise. So. Um, this is potentially essentially what we're doing whenever we're putting a GraphQL API on top of a RESTful API or on top of a database. Our resolvers are just talking to the database, or our resolvers are just talking to some uh, existing REST API. Cool. And now we just uh, start up the server. So um, you pass in the type definitions and the resolvers into GraphQL server, and then you say server.start. And by default, it starts on port 4000. Um, I believe we have access to graphical. Graphical. Let's see. Let's start it up and see what we get. Uh, so I'll create a start script in my package JSON. Let's just make this uh, node index.js. And then we'll do npm start. Cool. So running on port 4000, what happens if I go to it? Can't click it? Oh. Look at that. <laughs> I get a basic playground where I can interact with this API. So uh, if we look at how we defined this, we said our uh, query type is hello. And actually, um, we can look at the schema and notice that there's a query for hello. So the way we start this off is we say, um, we want a query. Well, I believe top level element needs to be query. Yeah, so query. And we want to query for hello. And um, it's possible to pass it in with no arguments. And we should just get back hello world. So go, we get back hello world. But if I invoke this with the argument and we give it the name coding garden, we should get back the string, hello, coding garden. And we do. Super basic. <laughs> uh, and this is just a basic GraphQL API. Uh, obviously, it's very dumb, doesn't do anything uh, awesome. But these are kind of the basics. You have your queries and type definitions, and then you have your resolvers, which decide what data to return based on that given query. Awesome. And the cool thing about uh, GraphQL Yoga is this is all it takes to get that GraphQL endpoint up and to get this nice little UI where you can interact with it. Uh, when you're using some of the other libraries, you have to bring in other libraries and kind of hook things up. GraphQL Yoga just does everything for you under the hood. It's pretty sweet. So that's our basic Hello World API. Uh, let's build a to-do GraphQL API. All right. Um, I'm just going to rename this Hello World, and then we're going to work in this same directory. Well, actually, no. That's there. Let's create a new directory. Nope, nope, nope. So let's do uh, to do GraphQL. Cool. Let's kill that server. Let's go into to do GraphQL. We'll npm init it. We'll then npm install GraphQL Yoga. And we'll 
we'll get started with our basic API. So let's create a new file. We'll call it index.js. Let's create a package JSON with a start script. So when this starts, load up uh, index.js. And in here, we'll start from where we were before, but then we'll start to kind of like modify it. OK, first thing is, uh, so we did that. Now we need to define the to-do type. So what is our to-do going to have? Um, typically, our to-do will have like a title and then maybe like a Boolean, whether, whether or not it's done. So let's do that. Um, in here, we need a new uh, type definition. So in this case, we're not defining a query. We're defining a to-do, to-do, like that. And then we need to define. Uh, what are its given fields? So let's say it will have an ID, and that is going to be of type ID, and it cannot be null. Uh, let's also say that it has a title, and that is going to be a string, and it cannot be empty. And then let's also say um, completed, or let's call it done. And that is a Boolean that cannot be empty. So we have defined, we're going to have a to do. It has three fields, ID, title, and done. Awesome. So that's our basic to-do type. Now let's define a query type to get all of the to-dos. So in this same string here, I'm going to define a type for query. One of the queries I want is all to-dos. And this, the type of this, will be a list of to-do. And there must be some inside of there, and that has to be defined. So basically, this says, you can make a query for all to-dos, and you're going to get back an array of things that have this type, ID, title, and done. Cool. Now we need the query resolver. So what should we do when all to-dos is request? So the query is uh, all to-dos, and it doesn't take in uh, any parameters. So we can really just leave all of this blank. And what do we need to send back? Uh, an array of to-dos. So let's let's just get some basic data. So inside this folder, let's create a new file. We'll call this uh, to-dos.js, and it will just uh, export an array with to-dos in it. So ID is one, title is learn GraphQL, and done is false. And we need another to-do. ID is two. Title is um, learn nano GraphQL or nano QL, I think it's called. Done is false, and let's just add one more. ID is three. Title is learn schemas. Done is false. OK, so we have this basic array. This is going to be the array that we return when we request all to-dos. So in my index, I'm just going to require that file in. So let's say to-dos is require the file at to-dos. And now to-dos is what we return whenever we request all of the to-dos. Simple as that. So now that we have this, let's try to query for it. So we'll start this up, running on localhost 4000. Do a hard refresh. Now this one's running. So it saves our queries from last time. But you'll notice um, we have one possible query, all to-dos, and then we can request specific things back. So we want a query. We want our query for all to-dos. And let's just grab the title of all the things in the to-dos. Go. Boom. We get back an array with all of the titles. Let's see, can I? No, can I? Look at that. So I requested the title. We get back just the titles. Let's also grab whether or not they're done. I get that back too. Let's also grab their IDs. Get that back too. Uh, let's just get their IDs. Just get their IDs. So uh, with just a basic type definition and then query definition, and then we're just bringing in an array of to-dos, we are. Uh, easily querying it with uh, GraphQL. Cool. So we have that. All right, let's do some mutations, because this is where it gets a little more interesting. We actually want to change the data or like add new to-dos to the array. So the first thing we're, we'll do is a create mutation. 
So in our type definitions, we want to define mutation. And we want to define uh, create to do. And this will take in arguments as to uh, what will be the, the properties of the to do that we create. So we'll say uh, title, and that's a string, obviously. Uh, we'll say done, and that is a uh, boolean. Simple enough. And then uh, this will return the to do that got created. So our mutation is now saying uh, you can call create to do. You'll pass in the title and done. And this will actually create the to do on the server. Cool. So let's create our mutation. Um, inside of our resolvers, we'll say here mutation. And we need a mutation for create to do. This is going to take in, you have your first parameter, and then you can essentially destructure what you're getting in, but we're going to get access to the title and done. Then we need to define what should happen on the server side whenever we receive those things. Uh, this should be like that. Cool. Uh, so first, let's just create a new to-do. So we'll say a to-do is going to be an object. Uh, its ID will just be um, the, let's say, todos.length. This is not the best way to create IDs, but it's super basic for right now. So ID is todos.length. The title is that, and done is that. Cool. Uh, now we need to put that to do into the array. So let's say um, to do's dot push to do. And uh, then we'll just return the to do that just got created. As simple as that. OK, so now, now let's create some to do's. Um, I need to restart my server. But uh, one thing to note is because I'm just storing these to do's in an array here, Every time I restart the server, any new to-dos that got created are going are gonna to disappear. This is where you would use something like a database. But we should have some basic creation happening now. So let's do this. We will refresh that. Now if we look at the schema, we also have mutations, and we have access to create to-do. So I want a mutation. I want to create a to-do. I want the title to be a learn graphical. And actually, this interface, I'm curious if it is GraphQL, or maybe it's a, some other some other one. <laughs> Graph, graph graphical? I think that's it. Cool. So title is graphical and done is false. Um, and what do I want to get back from this to-do that I just created? Well, let's grab their ID, let's grab their title, and let's grab their done property. I think this works works without commas. Let's see. Okay, so it got created. But now, if I request all of the to-dos, uh, use. Notice that one is in there now because our mutation actually inserted into the array. So now the next time we query for all to-dos, we get back all the to-dos, including that extra one. Also, very cool. All right, um, so we, we defined the create resolver. Uh, now let's do deletion. So we need a, wait, that's the wrong thing. This one. We need a mutation for uh, delete to do. Uh, this should just take in uh, the ID. And this is a uh, type of ID. Let's see. Yeah. And we'll send back the to-do that just got um, deleted. OK, so now we need our resolver. So our resolver for uh, delete to-do will be a function. It will take in the ID. And then we need to do something with that. Let's take a quick stretch. Whew. OK, so what do we do with this ID? We find the to-do in the array that has that ID, and then we splice it out. So let's do um, todos.findindex, the to-do where that to-do, that ID, is equal to this ID. 
And then we want to, oh, and that's, actually, this is the to do index. Then we want to remove that index from the array. So we'll say uh, to do's.splice, to do index, and remove one of them. Um, and before we do that, let's store the to do so we can return it um, to show the, the thing that actually got deleted. So let's say to do is to do's at that to do index. And so we'll splice it out, and then we will return the to-do that we just deleted. Cool. So let's restart our server. Technically, I could use NodeMon for this. Let's just install that. It'll make it make it easier. Uh, this will be a dev dependency. Cool. And then I'll add a dev script in my package.json. So we also need dev uh, nodemon index.js. Cool. Awesome. So now if we refresh, if we look at our mutations, we now also have delete to do. Um, and because the server restarted, when I request all to do's, there's only three of them in there. Um, but let's delete the delete the to do with ID one. So we're going to do a mutation. We're going to say delete to do. We're going to say ID is one. And what do we want back from the thing we just deleted? Well, let's just get back everything. I want ID title and done. Go. So it deleted it. Now, if we request all to do's, the to do that I had ID one is no longer there. Very cool. Um, so that's basically it. I think one thing we should do is create a mutation that updates the done property. So let's do this. Uh, let's create a another mutation. We'll call this uh, update to do. This will take in the ID of the to do that we're going to update, and then um, just take in the done property. So we could also take in the title, but let's just say you can either um, mark a to do as done or undone. That's that's the, the update that we're going to do here. Cool. So now we need a resolver for update to do. This takes in the uh, ID and done. Then we need to find that to do. So we can do to do's dot find the to do where to do dot ID is equal to the given ID that they passed in. And then we'll say to do dot done equals done, or the thing that they just passed in. And then we will return that to do. Easy as that. All right, so let's mark some to do's as done. So when we request all to do's, let's also request their done property. Uh, so, oh, the server restarted. So now, now all three of them are, are there again. Uh, but so this says ID 1, ID 2, and ID 3. Now uh, let's mark the one with ID 1 as uh, done. So we'll mark it as true. So we need a mutation. We're going to update. Actually, do I have access to it? Nope. What did I forget? So we have a mutation. We have update to do. We have mutation. We have update to do. Did the server restart? Let's manually restart it. Oh, you know what? I may need to also do a hard refresh over here. Yeah. Uh, so now we have the update to do mutation. So we can say update to do, where ID is one, and set done to true. Um, you'll notice it's complaining at me right now. Let's see what error message it says. Um, oh. I believe I actually do need to pass this as, in a string, as a string, but what it is complaining about is uh, what what fields do I want back from this query? And let's just get back uh, title of the thing that we updated. And also done, make sure that it's true. Go, cool. And now if we request all to do's again, uh, with their done property, that one is marked as true. So. Simple mutations that will update existing things in that array. And that is our basic uh, to do um, GraphQL API. Simple enough. Now let's build a simple client. So um, 
I was just doing all of this in this, this GUI tool here. Let's build a simple front end light, a client. We'll use vanilla.js and we'll build a to do app that actually interfaces with this GraphQL API. So let's do that. Um, let's create a new folder. We'll say uh, to do client. And then inside of there, we'll create an index.html. HTML. I want that one. Cool. So we'll say to do graph QL. Cool. Um, I'm going to bring in some super basic styles. This is just a style sheet that I made that makes it look better than what it looks like default in the browser. OK. And then we'll just have like a nice little h1. We'll say uh, to do graph QL. And then we'll add a script. Let's add in, we'll just call it main.js. And inside of here, we'll create a new file, main.js. And we'll log, not that, we'll log hello world. Let's see what we get. So we'll go up one directory and then go into the to do client and then start this up. So we'll just use light server for this. But now we have a static client running on port 3000. Cool. Now let's use the nano GraphQL library. So this is a library that will uh, allow us to actually call our API from the front end. Um, I'm curious if there's a CDN version though. Let's see. Let's look on a CDN JS. Graphical. Oh, you know what? <laughs> it's really just a um, a library for creating these these strings. We can just use fetch. Let's just use fetch. <laughs> uh, and let's just do a basic thing. So when the page loads, let's request all of the to do. So we can see from our playground how we did that. So actually, we want to grab the ID, the title, and done from all of the to-do. So this is the query that we want to make on the client side. So let's store that in a variable. So we'll say query will be this. And then we just need to fetch it. So I'm going to do a fetch against the uh, GraphQL API. Then we get back the response. We'll parse that response as JSON. And then we will get back uh, let's call it uh, result. And then we will just log that result. OK, uh, so what is the GraphQL API? It is simply uh, where my server is running, which is on port uh, 4000. So we'll do HTTP colon slash slash local host port 4000. Uh, and I believe it's slash, slash GraphQL. Uh, if we look at the documentation that they did. Ah, so we're actually doing a, a fetch against slash query. And we could technically look at the dev tools here to see what request this thing is actually making. So when I click um, to make this request, we can see that a request is going to uh, port 4000. It's a post request. And the body of the request has a query inside of it. So let's do this. We're going to create a post request. And we're just going to go to port 4000. Really, I think we don't need to define this because we are going to specify the query property. So we are going to say the method of this post or the method of this fetch is post. The body is going to be uh, json.stringify, an object that has a query property that is equal to this query string. right? And uh, we'll probably also have to specify our content type header. Actually, 
Actually, let's see what it was set to as here. Uh, so in the request, accept content link, content type, application JSON. Easy enough. Cool. So if we did this correctly, this is going to fetch against our GraphQL API. It's going to send this query and then get back the response and parse it as JSON. Let's see what happens. So over here, if we open the dev tools, we got back an object with errors. Uh, unexpected name, all to do's. Uh, let's see what they sent here. Let's look at the network tab, see what actually happens. So this is a post, a post. Oh, this, this whole thing needs to be wrapped in curlies, I believe. There we go. <laughs> and so now, just regular plain old vanilla JavaScript, we are making a request to our GraphQL API and getting back the data. So let's just list out these on the page uh, like an unordered list. So on here, let's have an unordered list. Let's give this an ID of uh, to-dos. And uh, in the JavaScript, we will grab this element Say to do's element document dot query selector the thing with the ID to do's and then after we get back the result we want to iterate over result dot data dot all to do's so we'll say um, to do's is result dot data dot all to do's and then we're going to iterate over that so I'll say to do's dot Really, we don't want to iterate. We just want to set the contents of the to-dos element to be that. So its inner HTML is going to be to-dos.reduce. We're going to reduce this array down to an HTML string. So we have HTML. We also have um, the specific to-do itself. And this will start off as an empty string. And we're going to return HTML plus a list item for each individual to do. And that list item will just have to do dot title inside of it. Okay. Page loads, boom. We get an unordered list of uh, to do items. Cool. So at this point, we're really just doing uh, a query for everything. Let's try to do a mutation. Uh, we're just going to do a simple form to create a to do, and that's going to call our create to do mutation. So we'll create a form. This will have a label. We'll say new to do. Uh, we'll say title. Actually, yeah, let's call this title. Uh, input type is text. Uh, ID is title. And the name is title. Cool. Uh, and then we'll have a button that will say add to do. And the type of this button will be submit. OK, so when this form is submitted, we're going to create a new to do with the given uh, title. And we'll initialize done as false. So here, let's uh, grab the form element. So we'll say const uh, form document.querySelector. The first thing on the page that is with that has the tag form and then we'll listen for the submit event handler. So form dot add event listener, submit. And let's take a quick break. Cool. <clears throat> so when it's submitted, we get access to the event. We want to prevent the default action. And then we need to create a to-do object. So um, let's just grab that input. Title input is document.query selector the element with the ID title. So we want to create a to-do. So we'll say a to-do. 
Uh, and actually, we kind of want to do this inside of a GraphQL query. <laughs> uh, so let's let's do this. Uh, we'll create our uh, mutation. That is going to be something like this. And the mutation we want is uh, create to do. We need to pass in uh, the title, which is going to be, let's grab the title here. This will be uh, title input dot value. And then uh, done just will be false. And the thing we want back is the ID, the uh, title, and the done property. Cool. So now we should be able to um, make a request to the API. So in this case, we want to specify a mutation. And um, that will stringify it. Then we should get back the result. And let's just log that result. What is this complaining about? Oh. Cool. <laughs> so when the form is submitted, grab the title from the page, create our mutation um, query. I don't know, is, is it a query? Because this is technically a query. Create, create our mutation. This is our mutation. It's creating a new to-do. Post that to the API. I believe this will work. We might have to fix that. And then when we get back the result, we'll just log it out. Let's see what happens. So I want to create a new to-do where the title is uh, learn nano, is it nano GraphQL? Add to-do. Uh, unexpected token in JSON at position zero. <laughs> uh, if we look at the network tab, we can see what we actually sent. Um, Ah, we again need to wrap this in curlies like that, I believe. Learn GraphQL, nano GraphQL, add to do. Let's see. Let's let's see what happens when we create the mutation over here. So if we look at our history and we create look at the um, create to do mutation that we did. Let's make sure we're doing a similar thing. And actually, let's also see um, what gets sent to the server whenever we do this. Go. This is a post against localhost four thousand. Ah, okay, so. The property is query, and the value starts with mutation. OK. So we'll say our query, and that was not wrapped in curlies, but that was. So mutation, let's do a new line, a mutation with that inside of it. And I think that's what it wants. Let's see. So if we say learn uh, GraphQL nano console mutation is not defined. Oh, because we called it, we renamed it to query. We're going to get this. Here we go. <laughs> learn things, please. Add to do. OK, we got back the data. It actually did create that to do. And if we refresh the page, it's there. So let's do this. Instead of refreshing the page, we are just going to um, add it to the page the moment we get it back. So we'll say uh, inner HTML plus equals nice little list item with uh, the title. I think we have access to that right now. Yeah. Cool. So learn other things. Add to do, it gets added. Learning is fun. It gets added. Wowee. It gets added. Cool. But the cool thing is, because we're contacting the API, when I refresh this page, all of that data is still there because we're actually storing it on the server. Now, of course, we are just storing it inside of a simple array. 
And the moment we restart, that's not it, uh, this one. The moment we re restart this server, that whole array gets emptied out. But I hope, I hope you can see that like here on this resolver, instead of just giving back an array of to-dos, what if you actually queried your database for all of your to-dos? Or when you're creating a to-do, instead of just pushing it into an array, what if you actually did an insert statement to insert that into the database? Or what if you did an update statement or a delete statement? It would work exactly the same way. You define your mutations in the same way. The only thing that changes is what happens inside of the resolver. And this resolver can also return a promise. So you can use whatever uh, querying library like Monk or Mongoose or Connects or SQLize inside of here, and um, it'll behave in exactly the same way. Cool. That was fun. Um, what's on my readme? Yeah, so we queried for all on page load. Now I have, I've been streaming for a while and this is my second stream of the day. So I think I'm gonna call it there, but there are lots, lots of cool stuff uh, that we can do in future episodes. So I definitely want to create a more full-fledged GraphQL API that actually talks to a database and then also build a GraphQL API on top of an existing REST API. Uh, but I think now that we have kind of the basics down, like what is GraphQL? How do you define your basic, basic schemas, types, and mutations? How do you query it? Next time, we can get a little more complex and actually talk to a database or talk to a REST API. Cool. Um, some interesting resources you might check out and uh, this will all be on GitHub. I'll put the link in the description. There are some uh, services that offer up basically GraphQL like backend as a service where on this services website, you can actually define your schemas and uh, in mutations and it will just be a backend for you and you don't have to actually set anything up. Um, so those are awesome. And then there's this really good talk on YouTube called uh, Zero to GraphQL in 30 Minutes. Uh, this guy, Steve uh, Lusher, or Lusher, he basically sets up like three GraphQL endpoints all from scratch, all right in front of you using uh, Python, Node, and I think maybe Ruby. Uh, so it's, it's really cool to see like the things you can do with, with GraphQL. Um, Benjamin says he's been waiting for the stream. You're, you're welcome. Uh, like I said, we did cover really just the basics, but I definitely want to do a future episode where we dive a bit deeper and talk to a database or wrap a REST API or something like that. Cool. Um, I guess before I go, we'll say hello to my little fish. Um, I, I do. Yeah, this is, this is my new fish. I haven't named him yet. He's getting used to his new home. Hello. <laughs> um, I <laughs> I think I want to put out a poll. Uh, yeah, we can do that. Uh, put out a poll uh, so people can vote on what I should name him. I have some ideas for what, what I should name him. Um, and I don't think I'm going to be bound by the poll because that could have like really interesting consequences. But it'd be cool if you all helped me name my new fish. Cool. He's going to be a regular occurrence uh, now on Coding Garden. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, like I said, I'll post a, a link in the description to all this code that I just wrote, all the links and resources and everything else. And uh, look out for upcoming episode where we dive a bit deeper and talk to a database or talk to a REST API. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Thanks for participating in the chat. Um, I am taking a break from streaming for the next few days, but I will be back on Sunday for uh, morning tea. And uh, we, I do have upcoming streams, but I haven't officially decided on the topics for them. But if you go to poll.coding.garden, you can vote for um, upcoming topics and suggest topics for things that I should do. I think, let's see, I gotta log in real quick. Um, you can't see my screen, there we go. Um, I did do Redux. Maybe something on Docker. Data visualization would be super fun. Maybe something on Firebase. I know we've talked about that a lot. Um, yeah, I have been wanting to do something with a hybrid mobile app too. We could maybe use React Native, or there's a, a framework called Weeks, which you can use with Vue.js. Lot, lots of interesting options. Don't know what I'm gonna do just yet, but you can suggest and vote. Give me a better idea of what I might do. But yeah, thanks again. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.
uh, here's the fish one last time. He's just chill. He's just getting used to his home. Like, uh, he was so used to <laughs> being in such a small container. Um, and he'll get used to it. He'll start swimming around more. But <laughs> see you later.